Well, good evening. Good afternoon. Welcome to Sunday Live. It looks like we have a few more people joining us, and so I will pause a little bit while I adjust my camera. Others come in. Welcome on Facebook. Welcome on TikTok. Welcome on YouTube for later playback. <clears throat> God bless you. God keep you on this amazing Sunday. Um, let me see who all we have so far. Nancy Maria, Miranda, good to see you. Sister Pittman, good evening to you. To everybody who's joining, man, I'm so grateful for what the Lord is doing. Who else is here? Welcome to Sunday Live as we get ready to crack open God's word. Get your Bibles out. Get your Bibles out. We're going to continue our series on discernment, how to hear God's voice. And so I invite you to uh, come along for tonight's ride. I'm just trying to get the camera right. Thank you, Lord. It looks like I can probably... Let me move this up. Gracie, good morning or good good Sunday evening to you. So you saying good morning to you guys. Happy Sunday, Sister Trina and Troy. Hope you guys are having an amazing, amazing Sunday. All right, let's have a word of prayer, and then we're gonna get right into the word. I don't want to be with you any longer than an hour. I always say that. I like to cut these to about forty-five minutes. That's where our attention span tends to land. Uh, but I also know that when the Holy Spirit takes over and it's a good time. Time is just a, a construct of our imagination. Father, we thank you for another week, another day, another opportunity to grow, to hear your word. Uh, we thank you that you are growing us up in Christ and, and drawing us closer to you. I thank you for the community of people that you've put into our lives and what you've called us to in this season. I thank you for the multiple streams, right? It's, this is just not the only place where we get God's fulfillment and his encouragement but we thank you for the multiple churches and people and ministers and the gospel that's being preached all around the world, Lord. Have your way. You're already having your way. Do what you wish. We're trusting you that whoever you send this way, whoever comes across this feed, hears it as they need it. They receive it as your spirit gives them utterance. And I'm asking right now, hear me when I say this, that you speak tonight. And help us separate our personal opinions, our personal thoughts, remove us so your word can have its full control. It's in the name of Yeshua, in the name of Christ we pray. Everyone said, hallelujah. All right. So if you've been with us for the last year or so, many of you who know the story of how we started this was... The Lord spoke to me. He, he was very clear to me about a year ago and said, I need you to begin speaking. I want to use you in a different way. There are different groups of people out there that need to hear it the way you say it. And I trusted the Lord. We got online and whoever the Lord sends each week is who I trust that the Lord is ministering to. And there are another group of people who've become our family. Uh, people like you guys on TikTok, on Facebook, that I probably wouldn't have had an encounter with weekly daily in some instances. And so that's how this kind of started. We call it Sunday Live. On Tuesday nights, we have Bible study. You're welcome to join us at 7 p.m. every Tuesday night on TikTok and Facebook, later playback on uh, YouTube. We're going through um, Matthew chapter 5, 6, and 7, which has a close correlation to what we're preaching on Sunday nights around discernment. Uh, we also pray every morning, uh, weekday, Monday through Friday at 6 a.m. Central, right here on TikTok and then we put it back on YouTube later for later playback. The whole point of this is that we want God to be glorified. We want to grow in our relationship with Christ. And we truly want to be the hands and feet of who Jesus is in our communities. Um, this series, I heard God clearly last year as we were praying and praying and praying. And I'm trying to hear his voice as we pray each morning, I'm trying to be very disciplined and obedient. My my words, God's words, is that the scripture I'm just quoting? Like, how do I ensure that I'm discerning God's words? 
And so that's what this series was birthed out of is God saying, teach the people, teach us how to, to grow in the meat. This is not milk. If you are a new Christian, um, I would encourage you to maybe take a lot of notes because this is a little bit deeper than normal salvation. We're not talking about salvation and Jesus died on the cross and his blood. We understand that. Our, our next steps are how do we take those next steps into walking out his purpose and his mission? This is week seven, week seven of discernment. Uh, it's in week seven that this week we're going to discuss how to discern God at work and how to discern God in music. Now we've again, you have to go back and watch the previous six weeks. We've already established the four voices. You can go back and watch those sermons. I won't re-preach them. We speak to ourselves. God speaks to us, to us. The enemy speaks to us and then others speak to us and how to discern the difference. We understood that the discerning of the difference is the word of God. His word is the foundation of all discernment. You cannot have discernment if you don't know the word of God. And so we encourage everyone during this series to get in the word daily outside of our private time. And we have also learned that discerning God takes us pausing. You can't be a good listener if you don't listen. So part of discernment is reading his word, being in situations, and then asking the question, Lord, is this you? Lord, what are you, what are you saying? I want to be sure before I go into this head first, like I pause. Week four or five, we learned the difference between quenching the Holy Spirit and grieving the Holy Spirit. Go back and watch that. And then last week, we learned how to discern God in our finances and in parenting. So I, again, I encourage you to go back and, and watch those weeks. Tonight, let's start with discernment at work. I'm going to put my glasses on here. Again, good afternoon. Mary Lou, I see you out there. Lydia is out there uh, watching online. This is amazing, guys. Anita, Anitra, Maggie, thank you so much. Get your, get your Bibles out. Foundation of discernment goes back to the fruit of the spirit galatians chapter 5 verses 22 for the fruit of the spirit is love joy peace patience kindness goodness faithfulness gentleness self-control we've learned that if you really want to identify if something is of god it should have one of those characteristics or all of those characteristics that's god Th that's who he is and so i can discern a situation i can figure out a situation or my atmosphere by by just judging it against the spirit of God. Uh, Philippians 4 and 8 says, finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, what is good, whatever is good, uh, pute, excellent, praiseworthy, dwell on those things. Again, we can just have a spirit of discernment by simply saying, is it excellent? Is this good? Is, is this worthy of praising him? Oh, we're going to go somewhere tonight with the entertainment. That'll be part two of tonight's message. Uh, is it something I can dwell on? Is it, is it, is it honorable? Like, does God honor this? So let's talk about the eight to five. Most people on here, if you're not retired, you have a pretty decent job where you've worked for those who are retired. This lesson is still for you because you're still working. You do something, you impact somebody in something that you do for most of the day. And so a job is defined as we see it as putting food on the table, providing, working your way up the career ladder, having the opportunity to use the skills and all of the, the resources that you have learned over the years to benefit the company, the, the organization, uh, whatever it is that you do with your hands or your mind, that's considered work. Do we really take God to work with us? Now, all of you will say, well, I'm a Christian. I'm a Christian all the time. I'm a Christian 24-7. I don't put God aside. He's with me always. But do you really meditate on God throughout the work day? Like, what's his voice sound like at work? Do, do we understand that we have a purpose in our entire life. That includes the, the eight or nine hours that we, we spend on our jobs. 
It's, it's more than just providing food for our families or an opportunity to grow in our careers. But I truly think as, as you hear this tonight, that if we, as we discern what it is the Lord wants in the workplace, you're going to find out. You may already know this. I'm just going to add to what the Spirit is already sharing with us. That it's about Him. That the job that you have, that eight to five, that business that you run, your entrepreneurial skills, whatever it is that you do, it's for His glory. Everything that you do is supposed to be for His glory. Everything. See, we stand on Romans 8. 28 that says all things that includes your job, your eight to five, your side hustle, all things work together for good to those who love God. We love the Lord. That means we are called according to his purpose. So the question is, what's my purpose for God on my job? If you go to work every day just to punch in and punch out, get your things done, complete the task, you're probably not fulfilling his purpose because it's again, more then just completing the assignments, the tasks. There's people that you're supposed to impact. There's lives you're supposed to touch. All things fit on the job. For whatever reason, we have separated God from work. We, we've put a chasm in our head. We've, uh, there's a line of demarcation that when we go to work, it's work. And then when I get home, I can be spiritual. I play my Christian music in the car and on my breaks and on my lunch. But when I get back inside or when I get back on the computer, I got to get focused on work. And, and there is a discipline in having work ethic and doing the work of God. But for whatever reason, perhaps here's a couple of reasons why we separate God and work. One, what's God going to do anyway? There's no direct impact or implication to God helping me with this you know, spreadsheet or me finishing this task over here. It's going to get done with or without God's impact anyway. They're going to get rid of me and bring somebody else in anyway. So the job is the job. Perhaps we also separate God from the job because of the HR impacts and policies that forbid us to work, to talk about religion or our, our personal beliefs in the workplace. We, it's taboo. You don't talk about how much you make. You don't talk about God. You don't talk about relationships. Those kind of things you you leave alone, right? And so maybe that's one reason that we, we don't bring God into the workplace. Some of you may have a fear of being discriminated against. You know, if I put my Bible on my desk, if I let everybody know that I'm I'm serving God, I might offend other people who have a different religion or I might be discriminated against. I might miss the promotion or miss out on the quarterly bonus. Or they, they may try to, you know, set me up for failure because I express my beliefs for God. So I'm going to keep those things separate. Some people just truly don't bring God into the workplace because they don't know how. No one's ever taught them. No one's ever done series like this to, to show you how your godliness can have an impact on your eight to five. Is God speaking to you at work? Or does he say, oh, you're getting ready to go to work. So let's just kind of pause all discussions and conversations and I'll see you at your break. I'll see you at your lunch. I'll see you after, after work. Or does God truly want to be a part of that eight to five? And there's probably other reasons. I, you can put them in the chat why we probably don't use God, depend on God, talk about God in the workplace. Uh, Miranda says, I do hair for a living, so I'm constantly talking about God. That's awesome. That's awesome. That's a great example of someone who can take what they do. It's their job, their personal business, and you sitting in my chair, so you're going to have to consume what I'm giving out or you can go somewhere else. But for many others, many others, they're not the boss. They work for other people. They sit around other peers. And so they're very, very conservative in what they say and how they say it. Not because God is telling them not to say something, but because of maybe some of the reasons I just mentioned. What if, again, I told you that God actually cares about your career? He cares. He created you. He, he knows exactly the steps he has planned out for you. What if I told you God cares about how you represent him in the workplace? See, we can't be open to hearing God's voice only after work hours. 
He's speaking to us during work hours. He's a 24 by 7 God. He's constantly moving, speaking, directing, trying to give us insight and wisdom on our entire lives. So if you kind of only use God on the commute to work and after work, you're missing out on 27% of what God is doing for you. And I say seven, I say 27% because of this. Most of you work eight hours a day. Some of you nine hours a day. If you count again the commute to prep before work, that's 27% of your day. Most of us, most of us sleep a minimum of six hours. Some of you don't even get that much. Some get other, others get more. But let's just assume you sleep for six hours. You work for seven or eight hours. That's 50% of your day consumed with something other than a focus on something like God. So you're telling me, wait, wait, you're telling me that we're leaving God out of an intentional, an intentional focus of God almost 50% of our day? Because I'm sleeping for 25%. I'm working for 25 to 27% of my day. So I'm leaving God out of 50% of my day. I'm not sure about you. I don't ever want to operate on 50% of God. I can't survive on 50% of God. I need his presence 100% of the time. So tonight's question in the first half of this is, how do we get more of God at work? Since I'm there most of the time anyway, in my in my daytime, in my, in my waking hours, I spend it at the job. So how do I involve God? How do I hear his voice in the planning and in the, the, the development and the hands-on and the conversations I'm having? Well, let's find out. I want God to be so involved in my day that I can hear his voice and make decisions based on his leading. That's where we need to get to, that I can pause and say, wait a minute, wait a minute. I feel I feel the spirit of God asking me to, to shift, to do something, to get up, go to the break room, chat somebody, go find what, what's my heart, what's the spirit telling my heart right now? 1 Corinthians 6, 19. Do you not know that you, your body, you're the temple of the Holy Spirit his spirit, the discernment of God, you're not your own. You, you don't get to do what you want to do. You have been bought with a price. So now we have to glorify God with our waking bodies. John 14, 6 and 17 says, I, I'll ask the father and he'll give you another helper that he may be with you forever, even at work. This is the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive. Your coworkers may not understand this, but because it, does not because they don't see him or know him, but he abides in you at work and will be with you at work. See, God should be your career counselor, your mentor, your life coach, your, your work coach. His wisdom far outweighs those of any management book or mission statement at your job. The Holy Spirit is all powerful. Why wouldn't I use the most powerful thing in the world to guide me in conversations and interactions and analysis and updates and development plans and strategies. And like, why wouldn't I include him? Why wouldn't I say in every waking part of my day, help me, show me, guide me? Am I so headstrong, so ambitious that I'm not willing to stop and pause and say, Lord, communicate with me. I need to have a one-on-one -on -one with you. Sh share with me what, What's next? I found myself, if I can just be honest with you, I've worked for about 25 years now. I spent my first year at Pepsi Cola right out of college. I spent 18 years at AT&T Singular Wireless Southwestern Bell. I spent three years at Quest Diagnostics and I'm going on six months now at another company called NWN Carousel. In my full length career, in management, in leadership, I found myself being overly ambitious, found myself in certain situations in front of certain audiences where I was trying to impress, where I was trying to move up the ladder, try to say the right things, be the, be one of the smart ones in the room, sound articulate, try to code and, and be formal in front of the right people, right? I, I've learned in that, that it didn't always work because not everybody has your best interests at heart. 
trying to smooth and 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 I didn't kiss up to people. I've never kissed up to anyone, but I understand how to play the game, right? We've learned how to say certain things around the right people to, to get in front of the right people, what not to say. And I'm being honest with me tonight. I'm, I'm, I'm helping. I'm hoping by sharing my own experience that not in every situation that I, I let God lead me. I was going after the promotion. I wanted to be the vice president. I wanted to be a part of this committee or, or that. And I never once said, Holy Spirit, should I even apply for that job? Before I get my feelings hurt, before I feel like they're gatekeeping, was that even for me in the in the first place? Well, I'm I can hear some of you right now was, you know, you should you should fill out those opportunities and take advantage maybe for uh, the opportunity to get in front of other people or learn how to interview or see what the job is about. And I don't disagree with any of that. But ask the Holy Spirit. This is what we've learned in the last seven weeks is spirit of the living God. Is that the person I'm supposed to get in front of and learn these things from or learn about the job or introduce myself? So I, I was trying to find myself. I was getting on everybody's calendar, trying to, you know, introduce myself to the right people who may have knew this person and this job might come open. And so it's good to kind of be in this circle and that circle. And the whole time, God had a whole nother plan for my life. The, the entire time while I was trying to network. Yeah, that's a word we use that, that sounds very clingy and, and professional. What did the Lord tell me? Kim, were you supposed to have that conversation? Were you supposed to Take this particular trip on this time. Were you supposed to call this person? But like, I really learned, I've learned, and I'm still learning how to pause and say, Lord, what do I do in this situation? Lord, how should I respond? Yeah, I used to be one that when an email came over and somebody said something, did something, but I've learned to just read it, sit on it, that my spirit ministered to me. See, your words and your actions have an impact, not just on you, but on those that God has placed around you. Let me say that again. Your words and your actions have an impact in the workplace, not just on you, but the people God placed around you. It's not an accident that you have those peers and those co-workers. Some of them you like, some of them you don't. Some like you, some don't like you. It's not an accident. This was a setup. God knew exactly what he's doing. He's never stopped being in control. That includes your colleagues at work. You're at that job because God said, that's where I needed you right now. Some people in your life at your job are there because God needs you to water and plant seeds. Are you hearing his voice? Are you open to God saying, hey, I need you to just drop a, a God bless you or I'm praying for you or a smile, just a simple smile and encouraging word. They had a rough night at home with their husband. They had a rough night with the kids and all they need is to feel my warmth. But we avoid people in the break room. We don't want to have that conversation. Are we open to hearing what the spirit of the Lord says? With the very people he's giving you. Yeah, he gave you those people to water and to plant seeds. Other people God has put into your life or to grow you. It's to water you, to plant seeds in you, for to, to be to have more resolve, to have more patience, character. Yeah, there's been certain people in my career that I know for a fact this was God. That person isn't benefiting, they're not on my side. They're against everything that I propose. And it's God building my patience. He's building my self-control. He's allowed a few Judases in my life. Yeah, we talked about this several times about Judas was with, was with Jesus for three years. He was the financial manager. He was the CFO of Jesus's ministry. The CFO set Jesus up and he knew the whole time. And God said, I allowed Judas. To be a part of this because without Judas, he doesn't get to the cross. No, we'll, we'll run the HR on our Judas. We're, we'll write an email. We'll confront them and tell them that, that you won't put up. I'm, I'm not dealing. Not. What if the Lord was saying what we're learning on Tuesday nights? Blessed are the peacemakers. Blessed are the humble. 
Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake. The kingdom of heaven is yours. Blessed are those who turn the other cheek. Blessed are those who love their enemies. Blessed are those, like, that's what you're there for. You are the hands and feet of God on your job. You are the ambassador of Christ at work. People are watching you and saying, this is how Christians act. This is how Christians love. This is how Christians interact in, in whole conversations with people. Are we being really good stewards of what he's given us? Some he's given five, some he's given two, some he's given one. Are you multiplying his love and his mercy and his grace with the people at your job? Colossians 3 and 23 says, whatever you do, do your work heartily as for the Lord rather than for men. Knowing that from the Lord, you will receive the reward of inheritance. It is the Lord Christ who you work for, you're serving. So every day you go to work, you should be going and saying, Lord, let's go. You, I'm working for you today. I'm getting all this done for you. As mundane as the task may be, do it with the work ethic as if you were working for the Lord. First Thessalonians 4 and 11 says, and make it your ambition. See, my ambition was somewhere else. I was very ambitious. I was trying. Make it your ambition to lead a quiet life and attend to your own business, stay out of the business and everything else that's going on. Work with your hands or your mind, just as I've commanded you. Paul was talking to the Thessalonians who said, okay, I'm a Christian now. Do I just stop working and can I just be Christian full time? He said, no, still be a Christian. But whatever God is giving you, do that thing as if you were doing it for God. Behave properly towards every outsider and anyone who's in need. You have an assignment while you're working. You, you have an assignment. Ask God right now as we discern and grow, what's my assignment? What, what's the purpose that I'm supposed to fulfill? What do you have in store for me on my job? Whose life am I supposed to touch? That's the beginning of discernment in the workspace. You have to make God a part of this. Have you ever asked God? What? Whose life am I supposed to touch today? This week? Who, who are you sending in my life? I guarantee you, when those kind of questions are asked, people start getting moved or charts change. You start reporting to different people. Someone else comes over to your area. Ah, this is who the Lord wants me to live out love with. See, discernment. We're talking about discernment. The sermon starts with remembering, well, remember what we said, Lord, is this you? Lord, am I doing what I'm supposed to do? Well, Lord, what do you want from me? Because I'm not my own. I speak on behalf of, I'm an ambassador. Is this helping so far? Let me just do a quick temperature check. Is this helping regarding the workspace? I, I pray that the Lord teaches all of us continues to show us how to be Christians in our workspace, the application of being holy everywhere we go. Hmm. All right, I'm going to keep moving. All right, you guys are saying yes. All right, so I'm on the right track. Thank you, Holy Spirit. There may be people at, their, at your job that have never heard the gospel ever, ever. Like, it's just not something they grew up with or they made a decision. You might be the only gospel that they'll ever see and hear and watch. There may be people on your job who've been hurt by the church. You might be the only genuine, organic church that they'll ever see. Because we are the church. Right now, we're having church. We don't need a building. We don't need organs and pianos and an offering plate. This is the body of Christ. You guys are communicating online. We're talking about the Most High God. He said, if I be lifted up. I'll draw everybody to me. There may be other people who truly just need somebody to talk to because they can't talk to their husband. They can't talk to their sister. They don't have anyone else to share what's bothering them. And you might have been placed in the right place at the right time because they know you're not a gossip. They know you don't get into things like that. And you've opened yourself up to the opportunity to pray for them. Some people at your job, God may have called you to just pray. When you come to work, you bring the spirit of the Lord with you to that place. So it's important.
that you take over your atmosphere, you start binding spirits, every imagination, everything that's against God, everything that's against you, you are now taking authority. Yeah, for those of you that work from home, you are literally opening up whatever is going on online in other people's homes and other people's lives to your sphere. So it is so important that nothing that's happening in the workplace is entering my home, my atmosphere, and I'm going to be the ambassador. And we put a wall up. We stand in authority over everything that's online. Hmm, this is good. So ask yourself this question. This is the discernment at work. What is my personal mission statement? What's the, what's the vision of the Lord for my eight to five? Lord, who are the ones you call me to pray for? Who are the ones that you want me to encourage? Lord, will you show me? We're going to, and we've done this in the previous weeks, we're going to apply what he's teaching us to what we're actually doing right now, application. So in this moment, I want you to take 60 seconds, get a pencil and paper, put it in your, send a text message to yourself, send an email to yourself. Who are the people that God told you to just be a light to, to be salt to? Matthew chapter five, verse 14. You are the salt. You are the light of the world. 60 seconds. Go. Who's disruptive? Who's got the attitude? Who, who has fears and doubts? Holy Spirit, speak right now to our hearts. It's pretty obvious because you're around them all the time. <laughs> 30 more seconds. Write down their names. This becomes a part of your personal prayer list also. Yeah, God didn't put you on that job to be frustrated by people. He, you're to pray for them. God didn't put you on the, on, in that particular situation so you can have beef with the person. No, there's a purpose behind it. Blessed are those who are persecuted, who smile when they get stabbed in the back. Love your enemies. 10 more seconds. Write down those names. The, the Holy Spirit speaking to you right now. This is a series on discernment. So he's speaking to you right now. He's You're discerning. What you hear right now is not your voice. Definitely not Satan. Satan can't tell you to, to pray for people. And it's not others. The only voice that you hear right now is God and me. And I'm speaking on behalf of God. Write those names down. Now that you've written those names down, we'll get to the next part of this. Be obedient to what he's asking you to do with the people he's giving you. You are a priest. You are the priest of God. You are a minister. You don't need a certificate. You don't need to be ordained by a religious organization to follow through what God has called you to follow through. Preach, preacher, preach. Go into all the world. Preach the gospel. Be a life. Live a life that's worthy of the calling of Christ Jesus. Lord, what do you want me to do with these names? Pray. Encouragement. Go out to lunch with them. Open up. What's, what's my purpose? I'm almost done with work. We're going to go over to social media and music and entertainment and discernment there. But be rest assured. Now that you, you have this mindset of following God's purposes, plan, even in the workspace, and it may not be a full eight hours. I'm not telling you to go into work and just pray for eight hours. You'll get fired. Uh, but I also tell you, do your job, but, but be open to, Lord, I'm open. I'm open. I'm open. Do your job. I'm open. Whenever, whatever opportunities you send my way. Be rest assured, though, with this type of thinking, with this attitude, this purpose of mind in serving God, praying for others, helping others, the enemy is not going to like this. And for those of you who are already walking in the spirit at work, 
Here's some things that you're going to come up against. I'm just going to tell you now, here's some signs of the enemy. And when you see these signs, you'll know you're on the right track. But no weapon formed against us shall prosper. All things work together for good. Listen, you're going to be scrutinized by others. More, more than other people are scrutinized, it's going to feel like you're getting more heat than other people. Because the enemy wants you discouraged. The enemy don't want you fulfilling the mission. He don't want you around these people. So what better way to turn you off to the things of God by making you feel scrutinized? Expectations are going to be high. Right. Uh, there will be intentional, maybe unintentional setting you up for failure. It's going to feel like I'm not getting the resources I need. I'm not getting the help I need. Satan, want, again, his mission is still kill, destroy. He does not want you happy. He doesn't want you blessed. He doesn't want you to be fortunate. And so what better way to cause you grief and strife at work by thinking that you're being set up for failure, denied opportunities, things that you're doing really good. They're going to speak evil of. They never talk about the good stuff you do. They only talk about the bad stuff you do. You might be discriminated against. They're definitely going to try to misunderstand you. She's misunderstood. The things you say are misspoken, mis taken the wrong way. Other people say the exact same things, and it's a joke, and ha, ha, ha. But you say it, 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 it comes across different. That's okay. It, it's absolutely okay. I, I lost, lost my light over there. not sure why. Um. Feelings that your talents aren't being fully utilized. You have a, a certain skill set. You went to school for certain things, but you're doing mundane uh, operational things where you don't feel like the full value of who you are is being executed. That's Satan's way to try to, again, discourage you. He wants you to not be happy at your job so you can leave and not fulfill the, the mission that God has called you to. Trust me, there's spiritual warfare on the job. But if you don't look at it that way, if all you see is it as an eight to five, I want to get here, clock in, go home, then you're missing out on the war that you've already won. You, you have authority on your job. So don't be complacent. Don't allow apathy and, and the loss of sight around what your purpose is. It's to do the job God gave you there, but also to touch the lives of the people he's called you to. There's somebody that's only going to get that seed planted because you planted the seed. Like God said, I need you to help this person by just showing them love. Lord, I pray that we have a discerning spirit to hear what it is you want us to do in our jobs. But I, I pray that the challenges we face, we don't look at those challenges as just Satan all the time, but as a way to overcome and show people what resolve looks like. Lord, I pray that we work to the best of our abilities and be the example you called us to be so people can't point the finger and talk about our work ethic. Lord, I pray for us. Pray for everybody here that we're not misrepresented, that we be the ambassadors you called us to be. See, what the enemy would love more than anything to do is for him to ruin your witness, to misrepresent God. He would love to get you uh, to a point where uh, you want to quit. You want to send an email to HR. You start looking for another job. Yeah, he'd love to get you out of the situation you're in. Because then those lives can't be touched. And this may be a three-year process. This may be a five-year process. Some of you have been asking God for another job. And perhaps, just perhaps, the reason you haven't found another job yet is because God said the mission's not over. You can't leave this place until the life and the seed and the water's planted over here. Matthew 28, 19 and 20. I said it earlier. I'll say it again. Matthew 19, 20. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I command. And I'm with you always, even to the end of the age. That includes work. Acts 1 and 8. But you will receive the power of the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you shall be my witnesses, both in Jerusalem and Judea, Samaria, even to the remotest parts of the earth. That includes your job. 
2 Corinthians 5 and 20. Therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God were making an appeal through us. We beg you on behalf of Christ to be reconciled to God. Are you, are you his ambassador on your 8 to 5? Romans 1 and 16, for I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. That includes on my job. For it is the power of God through salvation to everyone that believes. James 5 and 20, let him know that he who turns a sinner from the error of his ways will have saved a soul from death and will cover a multi and which will cover a multitude of sins. You might be that person. 1 Peter 3 and 15, but sanctify Christ is Lord in your hearts, always being ready to make a defense to everyone who asks you to give an account for why you have this hope with gentleness and reverence. That's what God called you to do. For everyone out there that is afraid that they may lose their job or you don't want to be discriminated against or I got to have this job so I can't be preaching Jesus. That's not what I'm saying. I pray that you heard the discernment of God that said, Listen for his voice. Listen for the opportunities when he's asking you. Sometimes it's just pray quietly. You have control of an atmosphere. You can tell evil spirits, stop. I, we're not doing this. I, I get it. I get exactly what's trying to go on here and start praying. People's hearts will change. People's opinions will change. Remember, he changed the heart of Nebuchadnezzar. He put it on Pilate's heart. Pilate was like, no, I can't. I can't crucify this man. Like, God has that type of power. So I'll close with this for the workspace, and then we're going to go over to entertainment. God is not giving you a spirit of fear on your job, so don't worry about losing your job. He's going to take care of you. God gave you the job. They didn't give you the job. Your company didn't employ you. God employed you. So if God wants you to work, you're going to work. It just may not be there. God supplies my need, not the job. I've been at four different jobs and God has always come through. It wasn't AT&T that came through. It wasn't Pepsi that came through. It wasn't Quest Diagnostics that came through. And it's not NWN. God has blessed me with those opportunities. But God is the one supplying all my needs according to his riches. Not these companies' riches. Two, listen to your spirit. He'll reveal all things to you. Pause. He'll show you. Know that he placed you there on purpose. You're around the people that he needs you to be around. Ask the Lord what your mission statement is. Navigate based on what he's asking you to do. You've been assigned. Finish your assignment. And then lastly, I'll tell you, Continue to grow. Growing your self-control, growing your discipline, growing your love for other people. Because love is what's going to change everybody. Amen. Trina said, I haven't found a job yet. I'm still believing that God has one for me. Remember, I went 10 months. Go back. Remember my testimony. For whatever reason, I know the reason now. I know the reason now. This is the reason now. But for 10 months, the Lord did not allow me to work. Because I applied every day. I look for jobs Every week, I was more than qualified. My resume was tight. My cover letters were tight. And whatever reason, God shut the door. So I do trust the Lord, Trina, for you and everybody out there who's waiting on a job. Ren, many others. God already knows. Just be faithful in this season that you're in and complete what he's called you to do. Be the hands and feet of the people he's called you to be around. Your kids, family members, neighbors, whoever. Fulfill that mission. All right, let's talk about entertainment, discerning God's voice in entertainment. Let me make sure I don't have any comments over here on Facebook before we go to the next subject. All right, now I'm getting ready to speak in an area where I say this on Tuesday nights. Some of you might be offended. Don't be offended at me. I'm just going to speak the word of God. I'm, I'm going to speak where the Bible speaks. and I'm going to be quiet where the Bible is silent. I'm going to do my best to, again, discern as I'm hearing him. 
So this is not to offend anybody. We live in a world right now today where we are bombarded with leisurely distractions is what I'll call them. Entertainment, movies, songs, TV, uh, social media, streaming platforms. Like it's almost too much. Like I don't need another streaming platform. I could have kept cable at $200 at the rate that I'm going to be paying for all these platforms. And do I even have time? We just talked about my eight hours after work. I sleep for six or seven. I work for eight or nine. So I'm literally paying hundreds of dollars for TV I don't even watch. Some of us come home and the first thing we do is turn on the television and we don't even watch it. The TV's watching us. With all of the mediums that are offered to us, with the distraction of this will relax you, this will cause you some type of joy, enjoyment, will entertain you, will contain you. Here's the question, and I'm going to be quick here because we're running out of time. Here's the challenge. Have you ever stopped to ask God himself which TV shows, which movies, which songs, which artists, which social media platforms that he's a part of? Have, have you ever taken the time to truly navigate the ocean of entertainment. It's a vast ocean of things that just keep coming at us. And say, Lord, what are you connected to? Which, which executive producers are you a part of? Which new movie, which TV show, which new album did you co-produce? Are you the executive producer on any of this? Proverbs 4.23 says, above all things, above all things, above all, all else, guard your heart for everything you do flows from it. Our hearts, our emotions is a wellspring of life. Our emotions can go one way or another and it's shaped by the things we put into them. You've, we've always heard the saying that you're just a product of your environment. Well, I would say it a different way. You're being shaped your thoughts, your feelings, your attitudes, your reactions, your actions are a shape of what you put into you, right? So if the TV shows, the movies and the songs and the social media, some of us don't even watch TV anymore. I know a younger generation, all they watch is YouTube. That's it. Anything they want to watch, they just go find it on YouTube. These things have a powerful influence. And I'm not one to, to argue because you can't find it in the Bible. Nowhere in the Bible does it say that Satan is the author of music. God created music. He's not the worship leader in heaven. God is the worshiper of, of all worship. He's king of king, lord of lords. It always stayed in his control. He's still in control of all glory, all excellence, all things that are good are his. Every good and perfect gift comes from God. So I'm not giving Satan any credit for anything that's been created. Because who's the creator? Thank you, Holy Spirit. God is the creator. However, however, things that, are not, that, are, that aren't of God can have a negative influence on our life. It can shape our, our values, our worldview, our opinions, our responses. Some of the news programs can divide a country, divide people, divide family members. How do we as Christians stay vigilant? How do we as Christians hear the voice of God regarding the things that may lead us away from God? See, I don't want to put anything in my spirit that's going to cause God to not talk to me. Remember, discerning discernment is hearing God's voice at all times and being directed by him. So if I, if I put a wall up, if I bring something into my life that walls God off from me, then I'm missing out on the little bit of eight hours that I have with him. Now, the other side of this is you can become a monk to all entertainment. Wall yourself off to nothing but God. But I don't think he's called us to do that either. We have to interact with people. You are in the world, but not of the world. You have to go to work. You have to see these things that are out there. I believe God does want you to be happy, have some enjoyment, but what what enjoyment should we enjoy? What, what is the spirit of discernment, the spirit of God telling us 
is him and it's not him. Like, do you do you know that? Like, can you clearly define what TV show, what movie, what song, what social media influencer is truly God of God, not faking God, not mentioning God, but this is godly and this is not. Well, let's get let's get right into it. Because remember what we talked about week one, two, and three, that we always establish discernment by just what? Judging against the word of God. What does the word of God say? And I can look at the word of God and then look at that other thing and say, is that God? Is the thing I'm consuming, is the thing I'm watching, is the thing that I'm listening to, can I hear God in it? And it doesn't have to be godly words, it doesn't have to be worship music. But listen, here's what he said in the scripture. Think on the things that are pure, things that are lovely, things that are kind, things that are upright, things that are noble, things that are excellent. I can tell you what the opposite of excellent is. I can tell you the opposite of noble. I can tell you the opposite of right. James 4 and 7, Jesus' half-brother, blood brother, said this. Submit, therefore, to my brother, God. Re resist the devil. He'll flee. D draw near to God, and my brother will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your emotions, your heart, you double-minded. I'm speak for me. I've watched many of shows and movies where my emotions have gotten into it. I'm ready to fight. I'm ready to jump through that screen. Don't do that. Oh, she's made me so angry. How did it how did I get so invested in characters? How did I get so invested in it? I can listen to certain songs back in the day and even now get you pumped up, get you riled up, like, because it has an influence. Words matter. Actions matter. So what is considered evil, the devil, what is considered godly? I'm going to help us. Let's keep looking at the word. Galatians chapter 5, verse 16. Galatians chapter 5, verse 16. But I say to you, hmm, Walk in the spirit, watch in the spirit, listen in the spirit, social media in the spirit, watch TV in the spirit, watch movies in the spirit, walk in the spirit so you will not carry out the desires of your flesh. For the flesh, for the desires of the flesh is against God's spirit and God's spirit is against fleshly things. For these things are opposition to one another in order to keep you from doing whatever you want. But if you're led by the spirit, you're not under the law. Now, here, here are the deeds that are so evident. These are the things that are evident. So think about social media. Think about movies, TV shows, songs. Sexual immorality. If your TV shows, movies, songs, social media has any signs of sexual immorality. That's adultery. That's fornication. That's in that's acts that's just not of God. It says impurity. Impurity is anything that's rude, disgusting, uh, outside of God's love and his grace, indecent behavior, cheating and lying and backstabbing and things that are idolatry, worship, witchcraft. There's certain shows movies even i think about some of the uh comics right some of the the universes of 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 tv shows i'm being very careful not to say certain names i'm hoping that your spirit is connecting that dwell into these characters are mythical feet uh, creatures and they have god given you know kind of abilities or they are gods they they put together which like What's entertaining us? Hostilities. How many shows and songs are hostile? There's strife. Always bickering and arguing. Always setting up a confrontation. Jealousy. Outburst of anger. I can think of a hundred shows right now where that is the theme of the show. Outburst of anger. Selfish ambitions. Dissension. Factions. Envy. People getting drunk carousing, all these things. I'm warning you. 
Stay away from things like this. Don't practice them. Don't consume them. Don't be a part of them. I hear somebody saying right now, but, but brother Ken, brother Ken, brother Ken, I don't actually do those things. I'm just watching entertainment of people who do those things. Okay, stay with me. Holy Spirit, speak to us because I want us to grow. And again, if, if you don't want to grow in this area, uh, no offense. I'm not upset. I'm a, I trust that the Lord is going to speak to you as he chooses to speak to you. But if you, if you choose to stay tuned in, it's getting ready to get deeper. The Oxford Dictionary or the Latin French word for entertain means to take hold. It means to have a mutual understanding, to intertwine, to engage, to keep someone occupied with their thoughts, with their opinions, uh, to, to take the time of that person to amuse them, to distract them, to enter. They are entering hmm. your, your area, your attainment, your, your containment. They're taking something that's opposite of his word, opposite of the glory of God, opposite of his holiness, and trying to contaminate you, entertain you. Oh, I hope you're picking this up. The, the Bible said your spirit is in opposition of that thing. It's trying to put the dissension, the immorality, the indecent behavior, the lies, the, the idolatry, the hostilities. And then the word of God is in you saying, but love and joy and peace and peace. But this show is hostile, hostile. Ooh, that's boy. That Did you see that tension? But then Pete and the two are fighting. The God will always win. But if you choose to put God kind of on the, on the back burner and you allow. Again, I'm praying for discernment tonight that the Lord shows us. And let me be clear, not every show, not every song, not every movie, not every social fluent, social media influencer is of the devil. This is where the discernment comes in, where we say, Lord, teach me, show me. Can you find any scriptures that says that it's okay to be entertained by some of the things that we call entertainment? Shows with sexual. It was a movie that just came out recently, and I watched it in the spirit. You say, How do you watch it in the spirit? I had a keen sense of, let me be very careful how I say this. The, the person who wrote the movie, produced the movie, directed the movie, was already on my list of stay away from. But I was curious because of a certain actor and where this was going to go. And I will absolutely tell you, as me and my wife watched this movie, our spirits, our spirits absolutely was turned off by this show, by some of the intentional sexual nature of the show, the lies, the manipulation. Like it was just one sin after another. It ended up being murderous at the end. Like all of this in one movie. And we asked ourselves this question. How does... How does someone who calls themselves a child of God write such horror, such conflict, such, such sexual immorality, such depravity? Like, here's the discernment that the Lord gives us, gave me. You think Paul would ever pen something like that? You think Peter would be the executive producer behind something like that? Do you think Jesus himself would sit in a director chair and say, and action, and sit back there and watch two people have a sexual, immoral relationship on screen, lie, cheat, deceive, fight, and Jesus say, and cut. Great job, everybody. That was awesome. All the people are going to be entertained by this because it's just entertainment. No one's really getting turned on by these things. No one's having their thoughts and minds changed. You think Jesus would actually author some of the books and some of the social media things that we laugh and share and send to other people? Oh, this is funny. You think Jesus would ever send some of this stuff? Second Timothy chapter three, one and five says this. Realize this. Please realize this. That in the last days, in the difficult times ahead, people are going to love what they love. Lovers of themselves. Boastful. 
arrogant, revilers, disobedient to parents, ungrateful, unholy, unloving, irreconcilable differences, malicious, gossips, no self-control, brutal, haters, treacherous, reckless, conceited, lovers of the pleasures of life rather than the pleasures of God. They're going to hold a form of godliness, but they're going to really deny its power. See, what, what discernment, discernment, my spirit says it's impossible for you to serve both. You can't do both. You can't get up and say, I want to thank the Lord for, for this award. I want to thank the Lord for, you know, the accomplishments. But the accomplishment was sexual immorality, lying, uh, an album or, or, or a, a, a product that absolutely God was not glorified in it. How do you glor how do you glorify God for something that was not glorious, that wasn't pure, that wasn't clean, that wasn't excellent, that wasn't holy? First Peter 13, 1 and 13 says, Therefore, prepare your minds for action. Keep sober. Your spirit fixed completely on the grace that he brought you through the revelation of Jesus Christ. As obedient children, don't be conformed to the former lust of the world. We just read about those former lusts. Even if it's in music, song, book, social media. But the one who is holy, the holy one, called you also to separate yourself and be holy. Like, don't. Here's another discernment that I use. If Jesus was sitting right here on the couch with me and the doorbell rang and Peter came in, Mary Martha came in, Thomas, a few of the others. And they say, hey, Ken, what you doing today? I'm like, nothing, Jesus. What y'all doing? Hey, we just want to watch whatever you watch. Can we sit down and watch TV? Which I brought, invite them back there to my room. We probably watch the thunder. And certain things I absolutely were like, no, Jesus, we're not watching that. Because you're not, like, you don't get glory from that. Like, there's no way you're being glorified in that TV show, that song, that movie. And I'd move on. That helps me. It really does. Colossians 3, chapter verse 1 says, Therefore, if you have been now raised in Christ, if you call yourself a Christian, you should be seeking things that are above. You should be watching things that are above. You should be listening to things that are above. Where Christ is seated. So imagine, Christ is seated in heaven. Are some of those songs, movies, TV shows, social media posts, like, are they in heaven? with? Because that's where we are. We're seated with Christ. That's where we should be. Set your thing, set your mind on things that are above, not on things that are on the earth. Ask yourself these questions. This is the sermon. Would Peter write that script? Would, would Peter put all that cussing and sexual indulgences in his movie? Would Paul, who actually wrote these scriptures that say stay away from all forms, all forms of evil? Entertainment is a form of evil. It doesn't glorify God. Some of it. Not all of it. Betrayal. Lies. Dishonesty. So part of this growth, part of, and we're going to make mistakes. None of us are perfect. We're getting there. We're getting to perfection. Part of your growth in Christ Jesus and hearing his spirit is, you just, like, listen, this is the foundation. It's just asking God, just show me, is this, is this you? Did you, did you help produce this song? Did you help produce this movie, this TV show? Are you a part of these actors' lives? Like, show me, God. You don't know what